I'm Dr. Deepak Chopra and today I'm having a nice conversation with Dr. Larry Smarr at the University of California, San Diego at a facility that he was responsible for creating. Dr. Smarr, where are we right now? This is the California Institute for Telecommunications and Information Technology. This particular building, Atkinson Hall, houses the Qualcomm Institute, which is the UC San Diego division of, of the overall and institute. And your position here is? I was the founding director. And you're a professor at UCSD Medical School? Yes, I've been a physicist, a mathematician, a computer scientist, and now I'm getting into uh, medicine and biology. So there you are. He's a physicist, he's a mathematician, he's getting into medicine and biology. And where we are today, this morning, is we are visiting that part of this wonderful uh, institution where Dr. Smar looks at the microbiome. So for those that haven't ever heard the word before, what is the microbiome? Well, each of us is an ecology. That is, in addition to our human cells, we have about 10 times that many cells, 90% of the cells in your body, that are bacteria. They're on your skin, in your mouth, and in particular, almost all of them are in your large intestine. Uh, and they have a great deal to do with uh, your state of health or disease. So would it be accurate to say that we are bacterial colonies with a few human cells hanging on? 10% human. 10% human and the rest it's are these bacteria. Hundreds of species of bacteria. Hundreds of ba ba species of bacteria. And that's what is referred to as the microbiome. Yes. And these are everywhere in our skin. They're in our oral cavity in our ears, ears eyes, yep. nasal passages, uh, stomach, the entire small and large intestine. And these bacteria as an ecosystem uh, also create certain metabolites. They have their own genes. Right. And these metabolites, of course, are part in our bloodstream, right? As much as a quarter uh, or a third of the small molecules in your, in your blood were created by our friends, the bacteria. And almost all of these bacteria are uh, good bacteria that do services for you. In a way, you know, when we talk about ecology, we talk about ecological services. And uh, that's really uh, what these do. They digest plant fiber, for instance. You don't. The bacteria do. Uh, they, uh, for instance, synthesize many of the vitamins that are essential for us. And when you take a drug, a pharmaceutical drug, uh, often a lot of the uh, prior work before it goes into your bloodstream goes through those microbes. So it would be accurate to say that without this 90% of who I am, I wouldn't exist, really. You, you might be dead. Yes. But you'd at least be very, very sick. <laughs> Does our mental state in any way influence the activity of this ecosystem that we call the microbiome? Uh, I, I believe very much so, uh, particularly stress, uh, because stress isn't just in your head. It produces a, a lot of uh, biochemicals, cortisol, I guess everyone's heard of, um, but it actually alters the environmental chemicals, essentially, that your microbes are in, and they're very sensitive to changes uh, in environmental uh, variables. Uh, but it works the other way around. If the microbiome gets out of whack, if, there's, if the ecology has more of more, say, bad, say, like crabgrass in your garden, uh, then it can actually affect your mood because sure. most of your serotonin and dopamine neurotransmitters that affect your mood are in your large intestine, not in your brain. So we would say that states of consciousness or moods or feelings um, influence biology, but it's the other way around too. It is, and, and you know, we think of ourselves as I, when we should think of ourselves as we. So when we are sad, <laughs> or we are happy, it's, it's not just going on in your brain, it's this collective Ecosystem. Chemical, uh, you know, the brain has probably more nerve cells in your large intestine than any other part of your body. So there's this super highway of nerve cells between the brain 
and the gut. And that's why people say, go with your gut. Gut it's, feelings. It's, it's almost like your second brain. Mm -hmm. And even the skin, it's the neuroectoderm, right? So this microbiome, you know, we have treatments at our center where we literally shift the microbiome by going on a plant-based diet, yes. by using plant-based uh, fiber, yeah. certain oils like primrose oil and uh, olive oil and uh, sesame oil mm -hmm. all added together. And we also then uh, do these very intricate massage procedures with uh, these uh, herbalized oils. We give people adaptogens like ashwagandha, etc. These are Ayurvedic herbs that are basically high concentrations of phytochemicals. Right. So it would be fair to suggest that we're shifting the microbiome? Absolutely. And the phytochemicals, these small chemicals that are in many of these herbs, uh, specific bacteria are have adapted to be able to have more of them if those phytochemicals are present or less of them if they are not. And so by changes in your diet, uh, scientific papers recently in the literature have shown that if you take someone and move them from say a paleo meat-based diet to a vegan plant-based diet, there is drastic shift in uh, population uh, of the ecology of your, of your gut, and then that acts back on your entire body. Including the metabolites that influence metabolic pathways, literally, right? It affects everything in your body. In your body. How your heart works, your liver, your kidneys. So Dr. Smart, I shared with you some data mm -hmm. earlier that uh, just meditation and quietening the mind uh, changes levels of telomerase mm -hmm. uh, in our uh, blood profile, right. but it also uh, upregulates the good genes, so to speak, which uh, go in the direction of help the body go into the direction of homeostasis, mm -hmm. it down-regulates the genes responsible for, uh, for inflammation, for example. Yes. And there's this dance in our bodies uh, between homeostasis and inflammation, and everything from diet to sleep to emotions to moods, the ecosystem, the epigenetic environment around the genes actually right. regulates these genes. What's important is when we, <clears throat> when we talk about genes, on the DNA that make each make a protein, 99% uh, of the genes in DNA are in the microbe DNA, not human. So from a gene point of view, it's even more dominant that it's the microbiome. And um, you know, you're a system, you're an integrated time dependent system. Like I say, 10% of the cells are human, but they function because of all these other species that are there. And it's been that way for hundreds of millions of years. All mammals have the same weeness. In fact, think about a termite. The next time you get mad at termites eating your house, don't blame the termite. It can't actually digest cellulose. It's the bacteria in the hind gut of each termite that is capable of digesting the cellulose and eating your house. So blame the microbes, not the termite. That's right. So this is very interesting to me because I, what I'm seeing is you, you are one of the pioneers of the future of medicine, which for lack of a better word would be based on a systems biology. That's correct. And the system includes everything from our genes to the genes of the microbiome to the environment around these genes, which right. includes everything from diet to sleep patterns to stress levels to moods, even thoughts. Absolutely. Uh, and that uh, social interactions, personal relationships, mm -hmm. they're all part of the environment. They are, and they determine your health. And you know that's what they find is that, uh, particularly as you get older, uh, there's this wonderful book called Blue Zones. Yes, sir. And, and no they look at these people that but they have that villages and, and, and towns that have people that are in their hundreds and hundreds and tens and so forth. And the social interaction of the individual is one of the most powerful indicators of longevity. And we could probably track that to the level of the genome and its expression, right? Well, and the interaction, you have, the brain is, uh, you know, when you're mapping out a social network that you're in and how everyone in that network has changed today, 
your brain is very active and the brain is a set of chemicals I mean it's just creating all these chemicals and those chemicals are very mixed with the microbiome and so on and even those chemicals uh, respond to moods opiates oxytocin serotonin right. dopamine right yes and remember that 85 percent of those mood neurotransmitters for serotonin and dopamine are in your large intestine in intimate contact with your microbiome so there's so, a communication going on between your mind, your brain, and your microbiome and your gut, and back and forth. If your microbiome isn't happy, you're not happy. <laughs> you're not happy. Okay, so uh, uh, we are right now embarking on our next study, which is called Self-Directed Biological uh, Transformation, which is how by changing your habits of thinking, feeling, eating, sleeping, stress management, all the other things we talked about, you can actually consciously direct a transformation in your body at a most fundamental level. The, the heart of the cell, or we might say the innermost sanctum of the cell, mm -hmm. where your DNA is, it's the holy shrine, right? And we can direct this little piece of double-stranded DNA to transform our bodies. Well, I believe that the four pillars of health are nutrition, exercise, sleep, and stress reduction. And, 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 if, and if you just concentrate on getting those four things right, you're going to be in the few percent of healthy people out of everybody in our population. So the ability to um, change your diet scientifically absolutely now we know changes your microbiome what we don't know so much is exactly how to direct it that is that's what we're learning that's what we're learning so with your expertise not only in this but in physics in the fact that you this institute where we are is also a tele is a communications institute Correct. right what was the full name again? It's the California Institute for Telecommunications and Information Technology. And now that telecommunications and information is translating to the microbiome and biology. Do you think we're seeing a new science in the making which will look at the mind, brain, microbiome, genome, environment as a single system? I do. I, I think it is going to take a blending of experts from many different fields that will make this new system medicine, as Lee Hood likes to call it, come into being. But in the end of the day, um, you are a system. Your brain is part of the system. Your microbiome is part of your system. Your heart is part of the system. And then you're embedded in an environment, a social environment, a chemical environment, a living environment. And the fascinating thing from a philosophical point of view, because I have always asked the question, who am I, who are you? But from that philosophical point of view, there's a chain of being or existence or life, if you want it, or even awareness that links me to the first living organisms or the single cell from where we all descended. You know, I've heard this term that about 2.8 billion years ago on the rims of volcanoes you had these organisms called chemolithoautotrophic mm -hmm. hyperthermophiles and uh, we are the descendants of those. <clears throat> Do you think in this whole chain of being and I'm not trying to put you on the spot there is ultimately the goal is just the balancing out of the ecosystem and the evolution of that ecosystem? Well, that's life on our planet, but we've now found out that there are five billion planets just in the Milky Way uh, galaxy. And, and, then the, and one discovered every few days. Yeah, and then there's a hundred billion galaxies, each with five billion. So I suspect that life is throughout the universe. Uh, and it is an odd thing that, that there is life. It effectively takes this flow of energy, like from the sun, chemicals, water, and all this stuff, and builds complexity. You know, normally in what happens in the world is things break down. But what life is about, and what Schrodinger said, is that life feeds on negative entropy. Life gets more complex 
and then it stays that way for these long periods of time. And evolves. And evolves. And, and so it's a pretty sophisticated system. But you can also totally mess it up, as we're beginning to do with our climate, and the Earth and the life on it will just adapt. But if it takes, as it often has after mass extinction events, tens of millions of years to get back to a, a good state, it will do that. That will be a problem for us, us but, but not, not for, for the Earth. Not for the life on the Earth right. or in the universe. Some species will go away, new ones will come. So, my last question Who are you? Well, I like to say, Who are we? Good. Who are we? So, I think we're learning a great deal about the missing part of the human. Now, you have talked for many years about the mental and consciousness part of us, but now here's 90% of our body that we weren't thinking of when we talked about who we are. And I think this is really the history, if you look back. I mean, there was a certain point, you know, with Freud and others where you begin to understand there is consciousness. There mm -hmm. are these things evolving around in us that ultimately converge on a personality and so forth. Well, that's like 100 years ago. Yeah. Not long. And Darwin was sort of 50, 60 years before that. Evolution and also. I like to think we're very young yet in our understanding of the way the world works. Mm -hmm. And that we're sort of on the frontier of massive discovery mm -hmm. about who we are. Well, the wisdom tradition I come from, it says if you go really deep, deep, deep into this question, who we are, uh, we can end up by saying we are the universe. At this moment, in this particular form, in the space-time continuum. Right. Well, we certainly are a tiny little speck of dust in an enormous universe. And the fact that there's life on this planet is incredibly special. And I think what I feel like is that you need to understand and be humble in, this, in the view that there is, you're part of this living, you're, you're part of these hundreds of species of microbes, you're part of this environment, and be responsible for that. Don't just think you can do whatever you want to your own body, to the world around you, but be conscious that you have a responsibility for the maintenance of the life that you inherited when you were born. Well, that's a fitting end to our conversation. I thank you very much, Dr. Smart. My pleasure. And I hope that we'll see more of these conversations. And as this data emerges, the birth of a new science. Thank you. Thank you.